everybody, it's been a while since I posted an update, but I kind of wanted to fill you in on what I've been working on for the um, Wargamers Anonymous March Challenge and you know what I've kind of been working on in general. And um, yeah, I just cracked open a nice uh, can of Guinness. I hope you're relaxing too, and let's go through it. So the first kind of thing for the, the challenge this month in March, it's Stand, you know, do, doing units of standard core troops, I mean, core troops for this month. And uh, you can probably tell I'm a little tired, a little stressed out right now. So, you know, that's kind of why I haven't been doing videos. I just haven't had the time. But I got a little time today. I'm kind of having a rest day, rest evening. So, yeah, for my kind of my first kind of core troop choice here, we got U.S. Infantry. Um, so I've done, well, these are the last, these are a batch of seven. I've been doing them in batches of, uh, around six to seven, and I'm making my kind of chain of command U.S. platoon for that. And these are the Warlord plastics. Um, so I've got, um, 24 minus seven done. Um, so that is a 17, I've got 17 of these done. And um, I've got, um, so then I've got these seven to do. Then I've got another, basically, um, sorry, my brain is like malfunctioning right now. I got another 11 to assemble and prime. And then I'm making up the rest of the difference with um, some Empress miniatures, US stuff, which is coming. And, you know, I got some Warlord games, heavy weapons, teams, and things like that. I got some, uh, like, mortars and stuff from Empress, which should, uh, should be arriving this week, actually. I uh, ordered those from Age of Glory, um, dot com here in the US, which is the, the US distributor. So that's gonna be my US force for Chain of Command to start off with. I actually got, I picked up a Sherman on eBay, too, for a really good, for a really good deal. So I gotta paint that up eventually, but that, you know, since that's kind of a, you know, it's a level six support item, I'm not gonna worry about that for right now. I'm gonna get my Germans done uh, before I'm, I move on to like that kind of tier of support weapons, just so I can kind of start getting games in. Um, yeah, so, and I started uh, the rest of the US platoon um, this month too, so, there, I'm gonna do the basing all at the same time. These guys I've been painting to, you know, what I would consider to be a, um, and this figure was actually a little lighter than it looks. Uh, it's just kind of dark in here because I'm, I'm doing this at night. But um, I'm painting these to what I would consider my very basic tabletop standard. And I, you know, I did spend some time highlighting some of these I just didn't really, you know, they're, you know, I actually like these figures. They're super fast to paint. I didn't really see the point in really highlighting these too much because they're, you know, wearing all this drab clothing. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> I'm fine with honestly on these, just the base coats and the washes on them. I'm just kind of doing a whole figure wash of Agrax Earthshade. And then, you know, this is speed painting. Uh, the U.S. troops are what I would consider a speed paint. The goal is just to get them done, really. And the Germans, kind of too, um, they're gonna be painted fast. Uh, and, you know, if I do some more, war I, you know, I will do more World War II in the future. Uh, with armies, I'm kind of maybe more interested and I might, I might spend a little more time in. It's not that I dislike the US Army, but it's not my main interest. So yeah, the bases still need to be done. I still gotta, you know, paint up that batch, and then I got more to assemble and prime too. But that's kind of my first thing, you know, the core U.S. Infantry Platoon. Um, so the next uh, kind of thing, you know, I've been working on, and usually I usually do, you know, show finished products um, in these videos, not works in progress. But I'm painting up a horde of Vikings. And I'm get my goal is to really get all the Bondi, the you know the farmers, the levy done. And my idea for this army is it's going to be kind of uh, a Ladang force. The Ladang is the the ship levy. That's what the translation into English is. Ladang ship levy. 
And that's kind of what the, um, you know, the more established, in the more established period, kind of towards the end of the Viking Age, through the, you know, the kind of medieval period, um, you know, that was kind of the, the Scandinavian monarchs would kind of call together their forces. You know, once you had those ki uh, kingdoms a little more centralized. Um, so there's going to be a lot of bowmen actually in this army, not as many as there should be really. Historically, about a third of the Ladang, the ship levy was armed with bows per regulation. And that was because, you know, they were mainly there to fight at sea. But the goal for this is to do a Norwegian Ladang army and they uh, were operating a lot in kind of the Scottish Isles. So I should probably, you know, some of the cloaks I should do tartan. So these I think are a little more fun to paint than the World War II stuff. I do like painting the World War II stuff, but I like colors and swords and stuff. So, and the beards are fun. So yeah, my goal is to really get all the Bondi done. Um, I've painted a lot. I still have, you know, 20 something to do. And the way I'm doing these is what I would call um, efficiency painting. That's kind of my trademark TM term for this efficiency painting. And I'm going to try and do my first uh, painting video, you know, on how I do that, how I do my efficiency painting. And, you know, I'll show you some of these figures there. You know, the shields I have not got to yet. Still uh, figuring out what exactly I want to do with those. But um, again, this is, I think this is a good tabletop standard. It's a little above, um, you know, what does U.S. In infantry wear. The U.S. infantry are, you know, straight up tabletop standard, a base coat and a wash and very, you know, I'm not really bothering with the highlights. These ones are kind of a step above that. You know, they're a base coat, a wash, and then selective, very selective highlights. Uh, and, you know, I call this method efficiency painting because it's not true speed painting, but, you know, you're painting in batches of eight figures. Um, that's what I usually do, paint in batches of eight. And within that batch, you're kind of working on painting all the same colors, you know, maybe picking three main colors to focus on. And then you're relying heavily on your washes. You're relying heavily on contrast paints for some of the smaller parts of the figure. You know, some of these, if you're an expert, you can tell like this tunic was done in contrast, right? And the, the leggings and stuff. Things like the, the wrapping around the legs, those are really great for um, contrast paints, I think excel at that kind of thing. I don't really like the look as much on the tunics, which is why I kind of tend to avoid doing it excessively. I mean, I don't think, like, I like the green, but the blue contrast paint, I think, looks terrible, to be honest. But, uh, so, if you want really want to get a solid blue color, I feel like you have to paint more traditionally. But, again, um, that, you know, these figures aren't the best figures I've ever painted. The, you know, you're kind of focusing your time and effort where it kind of matters most. I actually really like this, how this figure came out. Um, but with the efficiency painting, you know, you're kind of putting, you're making the washes do the work. This one, you know, only the belt was done in contrast, but that kind of saves you a step. And also that cloak um, back. This one, you know, the back of the cloak, I guess there's a little brown on it, but the back of the cloak was just null oil over white. You know, boom, done with the cloak. Um, the tunic, yeah, I mean, I did a little more highlighting on this figure. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, you know, mainly also my kind of efficiency painting um, standard is, you know, you're being just as time efficient with every stroke as possible. But you're not, you know, you're still doing some highlighting and, uh, but selectively highlighting. So I think I will do a video of me kind of painting in this style. And what works really well about what I call efficiency painting is it works really well um, if you've got frequent kind of small amounts of time to paint, which is kind of what my, my weekends are like and my evenings. You know, I might, I'm going to be doing other stuff, but... I'll take a break to put a wash on and then I can go back to doing other stuff. 
and then I can like highlight some of the, the blues or something really quickly and then I can go out and do something else. You know, you layer on the flesh and then you can put a wash on it and go do something else and come back later and add the highlights or something. So it's just um, uses time really efficiently, I think, to paint this way in large batches. Using contrast paints where you can. I don't really love contrast for main colors, but I think it works well on kind of belts or trousers or leg wrappings and shoes, uh, the spear shafts. You know, some of the tunics are contrast. I think it works really well on hair as well. Other, other hair is, you know, more traditionally painted, but um, it can work really well for hair as well. I don't like the flesh contrasts. That just doesn't really give me a deep enough tone. Um, I just, you know, some of the contrast paints really work. Some of them for me just don't. The flesh ones for me, I don't love on flesh. Um, I just don't think you, it brings out the features enough. I think just putting regular flesh paint on with a wash just works better. And then I think with your faces as well, it's really worth just adding that little extra highlight on the nose and the cheeks. Um, so that's kind of my personal opinion anyways. Um, you know, I don't, I don't like the blue contrast paints either. I've tried them, I have them, and they, I just don't like the tone to them. They have this kind of fluorescent-y kind of tone. You, can, you don't really get the nice deep blue rich color that you really want with blue. At least that's kind of my opinion. I think the red one is okay. I do like the green, and um, I like the yellow one actually as well, and all the brown ones and kind of off browns are really good like skeleton horde and agros dunes and snake bite leather gore grunt of fur all that kind of stuff is good but you know i think contrast paints you know they offer they offer some good solutions but i don't like them for fully painting a miniature with so i've kind of gone on along hopefully i can film that uh, efficiency painting video this weekend um, if I get the chance, but stay safe. I hope you're doing well and uh, I'll see you soon. And, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, in a couple months, we'll get some battle reports up on here, even if it's just me playing against myself. Um, but, in, you know, until really May 14th, I am really, uh, you know, miniature painting is like my 10th priority. You know, I got at least 10 other things that are more important um, taking up my time. So, but, I, you know, with, you utilizing your time effectively you know you can still really get stuff done uh even given those circumstances so yeah i hope uh hope everyone's doing well and this is kind of my first uh sort of video in the series looking at what i'm looking to submit for uh for the march entry see ya